Welcome guys to the character design workshop. Uh, this is going to be a super chill, super fun workshop. We're just mostly going to be uh, drawing our own characters today and we're going to take suggestions from people in the chats. This feels like a Twitch thing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, before we get started, we're going to talk real quick about, we're going to recap real quick about some of the stuff that was covered in the last in the last meeting. So yeah, we're just going to do a recap of what to consider when designing a character. So uh, the first thing we should consider is the silhouette. So silhouettes can convey a lot of different things, including size, details, and the pose. Uh, making sure you have a very distinct silhouette makes characters uh, really easy to distinguish between others, uh, especially during gameplay. So another thing that you should consider would be the style of the game. Um, what kind of art style you go for can affect the type of details you put into your characters, the colors you use, as well as the proportions and other things. For example, you could have cartoon-like versus realistic styles, you can have pixel art versus 3D art, and you can have bright colors or muted colors depending on your art style. Another really important thing to think about is the setting of your game. It affects the overall fashion of your character, as well as like the vibes of your characters and traits as well. Uh, a game's genre can affect uh, a design such as fantasy or sci-fi, and it also can be infected, uh, affected by the environment that the character is from. So whether they're from like a desert town or if they're from a modern city. So another thing would be the character's personalities. Um, obviously, your character's personalities can affect the fashion, what they wear, um, how they pose, and things like that. So for example, we have two characters from Persona 5, Haru and Futaba. Haru, who's more um, prim and proper, more feminine, and then Futaba, who's more like antisocial, just kind of games all day. <laughs> Some helpful tips uh, for designing your character. It's really helpful to have multiple designs before picking just one. It's sometimes people laser line on one specific design for their character before they realize that there's actually a few things they should change about their character. Uh, another good way is to do simple shapes when building the character because shapes go a lot into the psychology of uh, your character. And it's also very important to use references. So we'll be talking more about references as we do our drawings today. So now we're gonna be working on designing a character. Okay, so basically we have this base here that Sam created for us. She sent it in announcements. So if anyone else wants to like tag along and draw with us, you can go ahead and download that base. You can print it out and draw traditionally, or you could use a digital art program to draw on it. And we're also going to be designing characters as well. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to take suggestions in the chat for like things we should put into our character design, and then we'll both create a character based off that. And we're going to be creating characters in real time, and then we're going to try our best not to look at each other's work. Well, I, I think I'm the only one sharing the screen, so uh, we'll see how even with like the same like characteristics, like same setting, same background, same personality, we'll see how we interpret that as different people. Because uh, different people can interpret things differently in the character, so that's going to be really cool. I have my base right here. I'm going to just change the color. Uh, real quick before... Um, I get to designing the character. I'm actually going to do some silhouette things uh, real quick in a different layer. So like we mentioned before, like silhouettes are very Im important to how you design your character um, in terms of like shape psychology. Um, shapes are more important if you're doing stuff for like, uh, let's say, more cartoonish work. So if you think about, for example, um, if anybody like follow has ever watched Into the Spider Verse, so Fisk, uh, the big bald guy, he's very very square. So if I were to like just off the top of my head draw what he looks like, he looks exactly like this. He's like square and he's big. Um, do I have a better brush? <laughs> uh, sure, he's like square and big, kind of like this, but he also has like a small circular head and he has like these triangle arms, but the but the main thing is like, even from the silhouette, you should be able to like understand what he looks like, right? So this is kind of what he looks like in terms of silhouette. So silhouette talks about uh, just the basic shape. So he's very square, um, very sturdy. Um, uh, you could play a lot with like different shapes to see what kind of character you, you want to make. So what, like somebody give me a shape right now, like a really basic one. Don't give me like octagon or something like that. <laughs> I was about to say hexagon. 
Damn it. <laughs> um, triangle. A triangle? Perfect. So triangle, uh, sort of like what uh, Janissa said, triangle sometimes gives off like uh, in the meeting, uh, triangle sort of gives off the impression of being like prim and proper. So let's say, so let's do this like triangle base right here, just like sh sort of shaded in. So silhouette is super important when it comes to like just getting the the basic idea of your character. Because if you have like a silhouette that's really jumbled or hard to read, that could uh, that could also uh play into when you add more detail into your character so if we do more of a triangle uh shape more pointy so we could do like here are her legs you could do some really sharp and it doesn't have to be like one big shape overall it could be like multiple shapes notice that i'm using multiple triangles to sort of draw a figure it's gonna be really really messy but like you know using triangles for the feet and legs mm -hmm. and everything using triangles for the arms, still getting that same effect of the triangle here. Let's give him a triangle neck and let's give him a, let's give him a slightly triangular head. So just blocking out these shapes in general definitely helps with uh, just designing your character or giving a good feel of your character. So even from like this instance, you could probably tell that this guy's like really lanky or mysterious because of how pointed he is. He's probably very prim and posh, <laughs> things like that. So yeah, just just a little bit into like the silhouette work, uh, just like a, a really quick sort of rundown of that. Anyway, we're gonna go back to drawing stuff for the characters. So we're gonna go off some of the uh, <laughs> and talk. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're going to go through some of the stuff that was uh, included in the meeting from last time. So I guess the first thing I'm going to ask you guys is to give me a, let's see, I'm going to sort of skip over style of the game for now because the proportions sort of give off a very, not necessarily realistic, and it's not necessarily like anime. It's like in the realm of like, uh more uh teenage cartoons so if you think of things like she-ra on netflix or like voltron sort of in that area it's not or, or uh, avatar so it's not necessarily like anime but it's not really cartoonish uh it's in that weird in between realm so we're gonna go for that style today uh so i guess the first thing we'll talk about is the setting do you uh what kind of genre uh would this character be coming out of prehistoric Oh, that's interesting. Prehistoric. Ooh, that's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, let's do prehistoric. Prehistoric. Okay, okay. Uh, what kind of environment should this character come from? So let me just write this down somewhere. So, whoa, why is that so thick? So we're going to do, what is going on? Prehistoric. What is going on with my pen today? So we'll do prehistoric. Uh, what kind of environment should, she come, should this character come from? Uh, should it be like a uh, desert environment, forest environment? I guess if we think prehistoric, there's like frozen environment, things like that. <laughs> all right, all right. We got some people typing in the chat. I'm, it sucks because I don't know which imposter Sand is. Yeah. <laughs> Western. What about a Western? A Western prehistoric. <laughs> Sure, let's do it. That's gonna okay. be fun. Western, Western prehistoric <laughs> crossover of the <laughs> century. We'll do a Western prehistoric. Uh, okay, so sure, we'll do Western. So that's more of like a deserty sort of dry. Uh, let's talk about this person's personality. Also, are we aiming for more feminine or more masculine features? Grill. A grill, awesome. <laughs> Anime okay. grill. Okay. A grill. And then um, let's think about this character's femboy. personality. <laughs> a femboy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. This is a, a Western. Oh, gosh. A Western. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, are, we, are we looking for more feminine or for more masculine features? 
I tried to make this character as ambiguous in terms of of, of sort of gender. I'm gonna crash it all in on the feminine. Awesome. <laughs> feminine. Feminine. Oopsie. Don't mind Femine. that. <laughs> feminine. And then the personality. Is this character shy? Is it are they bombastic? Girl boss. <laughs> All right, so she's going to be a girl boss. <laughs> they look outgoing. Awesome. All right, so we're going to go off of that. I'm just going to, if it'll let me lower that opacity and just shrink it a little bit. Okay, we're going to get designing now. So, Garson. <laughs> All right. So, we have a prehistoric character who is also from a western. Uh, she's a girl, she's feminine, and she's also a girl boss. <laughs> <laughs> and her name is Garson, I guess. Uh, just as a note, this is really funny because gar Garçon in French means boy. <laughs> I hope you know that. <laughs> Alright. Um, okay, so when we talk about things like references, uh, it's very important to sort of sort out your different references. Um, maybe I can, if I go, hmm. I'm worried about what's in my safari. I hope nothing crazy is in my safari right now. What is this? Oh, writing apps. Perfect. Nothing too crazy is in my safari. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if we do like a uh, prehistoric, let's say prehistoric, um, outfits? <laughs> Why would you be worried? All right, let's look at these prehistoric outfits. Uh, I actually mentioned in a video from last semester that when you're looking at references, it's actually pretty interesting to go look at them on Pinterest. Pinterest has a lot of uh, variety when it comes to references. The problem with uh, with Google is that you get a bunch of stuff like this. That's a bunch of Halloween costumes, which which could help, but if you're if you're really looking for something that's a little different than a tunic and a belt, then uh, sometimes Pinterest is actually very helpful. So let's see if I could open Pinterest. If it'll, I'll I'll use Pinterest if it doesn't let me sign in or anything because I don't feel like signing into my Pinterest. Awesome. It's gonna, I can't use it unless I sign into Pinterest. Perfect. So we're just gonna stick to Google today. <laughs> All right. So we're just gonna stick to Google because I can't really do Pinterest right now, but I am gonna search up Western outfits, Western outfits. Dude, I looked up both. I looked up prehistoric and like old Western clothing. I'm like, how am I supposed to combine these? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'm, I, I'm, it's actually so funny that these are all like, women most for the most part but this is all like modern western if i'm looking for like let's do spaghetti western does anybody know why it's called spaghetti western i, I didn't know heard that yeah i never heard that before so like all of like the old western movies they're called spaghetti westerns and I, I don't really know why they're called that <laughs> All right, let's use, I'm going to use this reference from Red Dead Redemption because I love that game. Hmm. Oh, wait, this, this one looks good. Okay, okay. I think, I feel like I'm going to just end up with a character who looks like a knockoff Indiana Jones character. <laughs> so, and I think of the hair. So, I guess while we're doing this for anyone who's like interested in drawing characters, uh, the reason why we have these like guidelines right here is so that you get an approximation of where the features, the facial features should be. So in this case, uh, the center line here would basically just show you where an approximation the nose should be. So if I were to like just sketch out like the full nose, like the full nose should be like around in right where this circle is. Um, in most cases, that's the case. And then uh, I'm just going to draw the nose real quick. So here's the nose. Super simple. Uh, in terms of like the eyes, uh, a good frame of reference usually is that the bottom of the eye should line up with this line right here. So if I were to like to draw an eye, 
I always mess up drawing my eyes. I either draw them too far apart or I draw them too close. So you're going to see me redraw the eyes pretty often. But if you draw the eyes, usually the bottom of the eye is like at around where the bottom of that line is right there. Oh, so Spaghetti Western is kind of racist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Today we learn. Today we learned. All right. <laughs> so yeah, so just as a basic guideline. Um, another uh, cool guideline for like where you should put the ear. From my understanding, the the corner of your ear, or sorry, not the corner of your ear, the corner of your eye. So if this was the corner of my eye, right? Or even in, in real life, the corner of your eye should align to the top of your ear. I, I'm pretty sure, I think. So if you like take the corner of your eye and then like just draw a straight line across to your ear, that should be the top of your ear, or at least the start of your ear. There we go, that's a bit better. <laughs> All right, so that's the sort of basic outline of where the facial features are. Now, when it comes to the hair, the hairline sort of follows this uh, this, I guess this trapezoid shape. So if you were to take a trapezoid, but then just remove the bottom, that's kind of what the hairline looks like. So the hairline is this right here. And when it comes to drawing hair, some people make the mistake of drawing the hair right on top of the skull. Uh, hair has volume to it. So you need to make sure that when you draw hair, that you draw like a little bit away from the, the top of the skull right there. It's also pretty important to note that for the most part, everybody has a part to their hair. So uh, for example, my hair has a side part. So if I were to draw my hair, it would part to the side. That basically just determines the flow of your character's hair. So if it's, for example, where to, if the parting was right here, if this was where the part was, then hair would fall down this way and then hair would also arch around the skull this way. So it's very important to think of that. Uh, in terms of the hairstyle, hmm. I'm going to give her a ponytail. I think ponytails give Western girl boss energy. So I'm going to do a high, a high ponytail for her. So again, here's the part. Uh, I'm going to give fits like this. I'm going to give her an anime cowlick. I was gonna say we should play some music, but rhythm's dead. Oh. F in the chat for rhythm. So I I, I saw this like uh, when we were looking at the prehistoric thing that people like put their hair up and there's like a bow into the hair for some reason. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to take, using one of the references from this, from this, I'm going to take this like little shawl covering here, and I know in the prehistoric outfits, they have this like weird fascination with leopard print, so I'm going to give them a leopard print uh, uh, poncho. I'm not very, very good at drawing flowing clothes, uh, but it's... From my understanding, it's always remember. Uh, it's always you always have to remember the gravity of things whenever you draw things. So, for example, uh, a lot of art is just like observation. So, if you ever take the time to just like, if you ever wear clothes or if you ever just like people watch, just take a look at like how clothes fold fold over different body types. That's really the biggest advice I could give for anyone who's like interested in, in like doing more drawing is to, is to start observing sort of the world around you. I, I remember actually I think I read a uh, I read an autobiography of uh, Hayao Miyazaki and he mentioned that he learned how to draw because he used to love people watching in in Japan so he would like watch people. Sam, how prehistoric are you going with yours? Or should I not ask? Should we just like have it be a surprise how we both drew it? Um, 
I'm I, I'm honestly going towards like a fantasy fantasy type genre because the only way prehistoric and western would ever fit is in the fantasy genre. <laughs> so I'm low-key like thinking about uh, armor designs from Monster Hunter. I know, oh. Yeah, I know older Monster Hunter games there was like a not necessarily prehistoric and like they had like a desert area and they kind of had outfits that are not they're not really prehistoric. The only reason why they're kind of prehistoric is because they were like bone armor from the monsters that they hunt, hence the name of the game. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Okay, I think we have different interpretations then of how we're going about this. To draw her eyebrows. Facial expressions are very important also to capturing your character's like personality. She, my character looks a little deranged. I'm gonna keep the deranged aspect of how she looks. I guess another thing about like drawing um, like designs for your characters, it's kind of important to think about the functionality of the things that they wear. Uh, if you're being cool and edgy, I guess it doesn't matter, but sometimes there are some character designs where I guess Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy are big offenders of this, where all of their edgy characters have a lot of straps and chains for no reason. <laughs> Are there just but, characters, like, especially in anime more so, where the thing they're wearing, they should not be wearing that in a fight, dude. Things are gonna, like, yeah. pop out. Should we color these, or should we just do like the line art and the... Um, do you want to throw down some colors, or...? Uh, I'll do like, uh, just the base colors, but I probably wouldn't do any like shading. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna find a color palette on one of the, the things that we did from the last workshop and meeting. Maybe we use one of some of those.
Yeah, drawing clothes is pretty hard. I, I remember when I first started drawing... Oh, you didn't laugh, that's kind of funny. Oh. Uh, when I first started, like, drawing, I did a lot of, like, copying, like, off of the internet. Like, I would find a picture of something that I really liked, and then just, like... But actually, before I used to trace, like, I would put my piece of paper up to the TV, like, to the, like, computer screen and draw from there, and then my mom caught me doing that, and she yelled at me, because it, like, oh. it damages the screen, so she's like, you need to stop doing that, I was like, okay. But I still, like, wanted to draw, so instead I would just, like, I like, a picture of, like, I draw a lot of Pokemon, so, like, as a kid, I drew Pokemon, like, a lot. Yeah, I always drew Pokemon, too. Yeah, so, like, I would just, like, look at the screen and then, like, draw, like, Pokemon. And eventually, a lot of, like, looking at stuff and then drawing it is, like, really, honestly, pretty fundamental, like, to being able to draw. Because being able to understand, like, basic shapes of things mm -hmm. is, like, it's, like, pretty, uh, a pretty big skill. That's why in a lot of, like, beginner painters classes, they always have you do still life. Like, they, like, you know, the classic fruit bowl, and they have you draw the fruit bowl. I think I'm basically done with mine as well. Alright, are we gonna send ours now to Meeting Gen? Uh, real quick, I just need to add the leopard print of the stuff, so I guess that's just gonna, it's just gonna involve me drawing a bunch of spots. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I think I'm basically done. Time to export. Oops, that's not the correct one. Um, PNG. Okay. I guess should we do like a countdown or something? Sure. Okay, hold on. I'm just doing snipping tool instead of exporting it, so no one can see the parts where I didn't color properly. <laughs> uh, do we send in a meeting, Jen? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's send it in three, two, one. Woo! Oh! Oh wow! We had this is so much detail. <laughs> we had complete. <laughs> look at that! Oh, look at them! They're so cute. Historic Western anime grill girl boss. <laughs> Dang, those look, these look pretty good. Yeah. See, completely different approaches. Art by Mouse Pog. Hey, that looks pretty Whoa. good. Yeah, that's really Wait, good. That's really good. Anime Western Girl Pogs. <laughs> this was honestly kind of fun. This is like a it was. chill stream. Yeah. Okay. More officer art streams when?
<laughs> we should do it honestly if you think if yeah, we do like a do fun if we do like a fundraiser on twitch yeah dude <laughs> we're getting all the twitch subs all right but yeah that's gonna be the most part of our um our workshop today as you can see like from the three different examples that we had here so janista's mine and uh isabella is like we all had very different takes even though we had like completely similar um uh, prompts so you know prehistoric western anime girl girl boss <laughs> <laughs> so just like, went full like ice age hunter it honestly looks so cool it's like pretty pretty historically accurate i went full deranged psycho <laughs> uh in the in the woods type thing hey Hello? it's dan dan <laughs> yo it's dan dan what's up what's good yeah we're just wrapping up on a uh on a on a oh we got another one sent oh nice yep the fur <laughs> i'm actually cool, sam cool. ah damn it is is sam sorry about that but yeah I, I just kind of realized that my character also looks like I'm getting like Mandalorian vibes. It's probably the bandolier, but yeah. And then Isabella went went with a good mix as well. Very cool. Yeah, I'm excited to see what Enzo drew too, because mm -hmm. because he said he drew one. All right. Uh, again, this is less of a workshop and more just of like a like an example of how like even with the same sort of prompts everyone can like come up with a different um a different idea and this also sort of illustrates like um the idea that we were saying that you know characters oh did it stop sharing because i my screen black timed out oh shoot i need to stream again oh there's another one in chat now too he looks like Sokka. it's Sokka, <laughs> but prehistoric <laughs> he looks great. <laughs> yeah, great work, you guys. Uh, hold on, I need to share my screen again. I didn't realize it timed me out. So, uh, something very important to test if, like, uh, mm -hmm. it's not like a be all end all test, but a good test is just look at the silhouette. So, if I were to do like a clipping mask, and if I just were to drag black, oh, whoops. Uh, let's reference. Oh, that's kind of terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a little scary, but yeah, as you can see, I mean, even with just like, that's a little scary, but if you just take this, the form of the silhouette, you can see that some things are still, honestly, I fully expected my silhouette to be unreadable. But you could still read the the hand holding the fist pretty well. You could kind of read all of the fur. There's a lot of fur. <laughs> um, you could read the ponytail, uh, and you could read the sort of shoulder piece. It's still pretty readable, actually, as a silhouette. I was not expecting that, to be honest. I was fully expecting it to be unreadable. But yeah, there you go. There you go. Sort of uh, how that works with like the silhouette and things like that. But yeah, super awesome, super fun, just kind of chill hangout workshop as opposed to like super intensive learning. Um, the most important part when it comes to like designing your characters is, a, is definitely reference. Is it, so if you really can't think of, oh, I can't really think of like how to draw this character. Like initially when we got prehistoric Western, we were like, man, how are we gonna you know put those together? And if you just gather enough references, you can see like the, how different, uh styles can come together yeah genesis is still pretty readable um for example like let me go to my safari tab again uh when it comes to like i guess in this case when it comes to mashing two different genres together it's always important to see where you can make two things combine into one so if you look here like this guy has like a fur lined vest and that's something that's very you know, iconic to Western stuff. And if you go to like anything that's prehistoric, they wear a lot of fur. So you can combine that in a way. So another good one is like, 
you know, these like pictures of like shawls or not that not really shawls, but like really large tunics. That's also very similar to stuff that you see in, uh, in like all these Westerns where they also have these similar shawls. When it comes to combining different aspects together in terms of like the style and the design, it's always good to find points where these styles sort of intersect. I guess in this case, in a case where, you know, that isn't too far fetched, like prehistoric Western. If you you can find a definitely find a way to like get good designs out of it, and you know don't be ashamed to copy designs that you see off of the internet. Obviously, don't plagiarize. Like, don't draw exactly this person's outfit, but always take bits and pieces, and then nobody will know that you stole it from the internet. But yeah, thanks so much, you guys, for a super chill stream today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, just let us know. But other than that, this is just kind of the end of the workshop. Thank you so much, you guys.